So welcome back to the Team O'Neill Rally School. I'm Wyatt. Uh, we put a video out showing the difference between street car brakes and race car brakes, focusing mainly on the calipers and the pads and uh, the discs and that sort of thing. And we had a lot of good questions about the rest of the braking system. So what we're going to take you guys through very quickly here is a normal street car, the whole brake system. What happens from when you push the pedal all the way till the calipers grab and the pads are rubbing on the discs and your car slows down? Um, there's a few things there. What can you do to that standard braking system for a racing application? And then we're going to look briefly at a full-on race car braking system and see what that looks like and maybe you can take some of that info um, if you need it. So a normal road car like this one, this is a rally school car, but it's essentially very close to stock. Um, it's a little, little dirty and this thing, as you can imagine, leads a pretty hard life out here. But what you've got inside the vehicle, you've got the brake pedal. When you press on the brake pedal, what happens is a car like this, if you take a look right here, you've got a brake booster and a master cylinder with a reservoir, which is tucked up in a hole and very hard to see. So I found one and this is what it looks like. When you push on the brake pedal, the brake pedal's here, it pushes this piston in, which goes through this booster and essentially into the master cylinder, that rod goes, pressurizes brake fluid, sends it out through those lines, and from there, your pistons in your caliper can grab on the disc through the path. So long story short, this is, this is what's mounted to the firewall of your car. And what's going on here, this brake booster is just making it a lot easier for you to push on the pedal um, when you have a vacuum. So for a normal application, if you're driving on the street, you're always off of the throttle. You've got vacuum. When you push the brake pedal, the brake pedal is nice and soft and compliant and you can brake with very little effort. Um, in a racing application, any, anybody who's been racing for a while probably knows when you're left foot braking and you're on the gas, you don't have that vacuum anymore. Uh, you might have a small reservoir of vacuum or it might work a little bit, but what you'll find is when you're on the gas and you're hammering around corners and stuff and left foot braking, the brake pedal gets really, really hard. Like very, very hard to push and uh, you'll get used to that but then when you let off the gas it goes soft again so these brake boosters are often the first thing to go uh, for, for a rally car or a racing car you know take this thing out throw it in the woods put it all back together without it with a space or whatever you need to do there's other ways to disable these you can leave them in a lot of times just you know, I've seen people just uh, put a pair of vice grips on one of these vacuum lines. You know, all cars are different, but you can disable this vacuum um, brake booster one way or another, but that's very, very common and basically everybody does it. Um, so that's one thing you can do. From there, you'll see this master cylinder uh, is going to have lines. Some most have lines to the front brakes and to the rear brakes. So from there in a normal street car, what's happening is the brake lines leave from there and go over to this magic box, uh, which is your ABS control module, ABS control box, valve body, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's where your ABS pump is and your anti-lock brakes can take the brake pressure that you're trying to give it and it, it's reading the wheel speed sensors and, and it's going to see, ooh, wheels are locking up, release brake pressure, add brake pressure, release brake pressure, add brake pressure, and everything that your ABS is doing, it's doing within that box. Um, for a normal street driving application, again, that might be wonderful. For a rally car, um, a rally cross car, most track cars, you know, whatever kind of racing you might be doing, you're going to say, get rid of the ABS. Um, most old cars, that's as easy as just pulling a fuse and forgetting about it. Uh, sometimes you can just disconnect the wiring to that ABS pump. A lot of vehicles, if you try doing that, you'll find that your car might start but now your speedometer doesn't work or something else goes on because the wheel speed sensors go through that ABS unit but then often they go to somewhere else. Maybe the engine management wants to know your wheel speeds or you know electronic throttle. Uh, or something like that, or traction control, who knows what. So modern cars, whatever your vehicle is, uh, get on the internet and figure out what people do to get rid of it. Uh, and there's, uh, there's certainly a way around it. Some rally cars, 
a lot of rally cars, people leave it plugged in and all they'll do is take the lines from the master cylinder and run directly around it. Don't include, it's got no brake fluid in it, but it's plugged in so that those wheel speed uh, sensors are going through that and to the ECU or electronic throttle or wherever that information needs to go after that. Um, every car is different. Uh, old cars just pull the fuse and run it for the most part. From there the brake fluid will go back and out in this car, a Subaru like this. Your brake lines will go through the wheel arches to the front um, and have a rubber line 99% of the time that goes to the calipers and the back ones, these lines will go in this case through the inside of the vehicle to the rear firewall, come out of the wheel arches, flexi lines um, to the calipers in the back as well. A lot of cars, the brake lines are going to run underneath the vehicle. So again, for a rally car, a track car, something that's going to take some abuse, if you can, run those brake lines inside the vehicle. They're not flammable, they're not going to do anything weird to you. Um, it just keeps them safe and secure from uh, road rash and bottoming out or uh, salty roads or whatever might be going on. Having your brake lines run through the car on the inside with you is perfectly safe. Everybody does it. Um, and that'll give you the option as well. When we go inside, we're going to show you hydraulic handbrakes um, and some of that other stuff. So for a real racing application, um, running the brake lines through the car is definitely the way to go. All right, so that's the basics of a street car brakes. And you know, if you're going weekend racing, if you're building a production class rally car uh, or racing car of any kind, really, that, those are the parameters you're working in. When you really build a full on race car like this one though, this is Dave Wallingford's Fiesta R5 that he'll be racing coming up here in 2018. Uh, you've got a lot more liberties you can take with how you run your braking system. Uh, a car like this, you know, all of the major components except for really the calipers and discs and things are inside the car. So it's starting essentially with the brake pedal. You can see what we've got here is a, it's a floor mounted AP racing unit. There's many different kinds of these that you can find. There's a wide spectrum of price points uh, for this sort of thing. But really what you've got is this brake pedal as you push it down, it's got two master cylinders. You can see one on the left and one on the right. Um, one of those is gonna go to your front brakes and one of those is gonna go to your rear brakes. And it's adjustable so that as I push this brake pedal, you can see the one on the left starts to engage a little sooner. That's probably your front brakes um, because you want your front brakes to bite a little bit. They do most of the work and then your rear brakes follow up, but not necessarily as much. As you're driving, um, you might decide to change that. If you don't like the feel of your brakes, if you feel like the fronts are locking up too much and it's uh, the car doesn't turn in well, or say the rears are locking up too much and the car's unstable, you can adjust it remotely. This is the adjustment switch right here. Um, and again, you would just dial in, you know, some more front brake or more rear brake uh, or whatever you would like for the surface you're on. Uh, and a lot of times that's really driver's preference. You know, one driver might set it up a certain way and another driver might hate it and change it around. Um, but really your entire braking system is right here. You've got the two master cylinders. There's a little reservoir in here. From there, the brake lines are gonna simply come back down to this secondary master cylinder, which is run off of your hydraulic handbrake. Um, so let's see, this one right here is actually your brake master cylinder, correct? correct because it goes back to this T and this guy right here is a secondary master cylinder that hydraulically opens the center differential because when you pull the handbrake you need the rear tires to lock up while the front tires are still turning so you need to open that center diff in a four-wheel drive car like this so what happens is basically when I pull this handbrake you can see how it starts to push on um, the center diff master cylinder a little early so it'll open the center diff and then um, you'll be able to lock the rear wheels up you go sliding around the corner release everything and drive away again as you were so when you you don't need something this complicated in a front wheel drive car or in a rear wheel drive car and, you know subaru stis do the same thing electronically um, so that's a little bit simpler you would just have the one master cylinder for your brake line and when you do install this you can really just run your rear brake line from the master cylinder back to here in and out of another master cylinder with a lever on it you could make something 
homemade, you know, we've seen dozens and dozens and hundreds of them probably over the years. Um, you could weld something up in your garage that does the same job. And uh, yeah, from there you just run your rear brake line out with a T to each of your rear wheels job done. From there, it just goes through, um, you know, the body shell somewhere to the flexi lines, to the brake calipers in the back. So basically the same as, you know, a production streetcar from here on out. One of the things about this handbrake setup in particular that's kind of overkill and a really neat feature is um, you've got the handbrake handle here that activates the rear brake master cylinder and the hydraulic disconnect for the center differential. But if you follow this line from here, it, it actually leads to the handle. And what's going on is this handle itself is actually pressurized. Um, and that keeps the fluid and everything where it needs to be so that as you um, are using this handbrake going over rough terrain doing everything that you might be doing um, essentially it's a pressurized reservoir within the handle itself uh, which is just a really neat little feature with some of these M Sport parts so that's a pretty pretty good look hopefully at streetcar brakes production racing brakes and more of an open class type of racing brake system. Uh, hope you guys learned something. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Be sure to check out the website. Come out to the Team O'Neill Rally School sometime and we'll uh, drive some of these cars around, have some fun, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.